Hello, my name is Charlene Stevens, and I am the director of Arcade Project Curatorial. Our current exhibition, Gay Gorilla, includes an artist film library in which each artist will answer three questions to define the new genre of queer abstraction. My name is Will Hutnick. I'm an artist and curator based in Wasaic, New York. I'm also the director of artistic programming at the Wasaic Project, an art nonprofit that has a year-round education, exhibition, um, and artist residency program. My work primarily consists of painting and drawing. I use a mix of acrylic paint, spray paint, ink, colored pencils, crayons, uh, and various stencils and printmaking processes to question notions of time and space, in particular queer time and queer space. I think a lot about um, map making um, and topography um, and because I'm in such a rural environment in Wasaic, um, I think a lot about queering the landscape. There's um, a text by Jose Esteban Munoz, Cruising Utopia, that's lodged its way into my brain, um, in which he talks about queerness as something that cannot exist in the present or the present tense because, because it is constantly in flux and it's constantly shifting and adapting. And I think about that in relation to the passages and the color combinations and the shapes that I create in my work, where you're not quite sure what's positive, what's negative, what's coming, what's receding, where there's a purposeful disruption and disorientation of space. Um, and I think that's also echoed in the use of repeating passages, motifs, um, and repeating lines where I'm hopefully trying to thwart um, and disrupt um, traditional uh, notions of time and space um, as well as expectations um, and assumptions. The two works behind me are a part of the group exhibition Gay Gorilla, which I'm really honored to be a part of. Um, the one over here, um, this is 28 by 22 inches on canvas. It's called Slow Like Honey. Um, it was created earlier in 2020, um, pre-COVID, circa January or February. Um, there, um, what I've been doing a lot lately while I start work is work on numerous paintings at the same time, and in particular, a large sheet of canvas that's unstretched um, on the ground and use various um, printmaking processes as well as rollers and squeegees to kind of create stamps and imprints of various shapes, um, as well as um, rubbings from objects that I'll put underneath the canvas before I, you know, press um, and imprint the surface on top of one another, which is why you kind of get this kind of self-similar form, which is repeated throughout the work. Uh, this one is called Slow Like Honey which is a reference to um, a song from Robin's 2018 album. Uh, I was also really um, thinking about um, Fiona Apple, or at least she was on my mind while I was titling the work. Um, both her latest album, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, as well as um, her 1996 album, Title, which um, Soul Like Honey also comes from. Um, and I also think about Honey and um, as an object, um, its vis viscosity, its physicality, um, and its movement as being very slow and referencing an hourglass or a lava lamp. Um, so thinking about how honey would physically manifest itself and physically pour and move from one surface to another 
Um, I felt like this shape, especially the central passage, um, kind of really echoed those kind of formal and physical concerns. Uh, the other work in exhibition um, is called uh, The Hum That Never Goes Away, which is named after um, a sentence from Jennifer Egan's novel, A Visit from the Goon Squad, which is one of my favorites. Um, and I was rereading at the time when I created this work. Um, this was created in December of 2019 while I was in residence at the Hambage Center um, in Georgia. Um, and I love the sentence, the hum that never goes away because of a lot of my work, I hopefully references music or at least alludes to um, rhythm and a musicality um, and intonation and um, and I, I think because of the repeating pattern and the repeating imagery in the work there is this vibration that is present both within the shapes um, as well as in the repeating forms and um, I think a lot about vibration and the passages being non-static and having this kind of intense potential energy. Um, so I thought the hum that never goes away was a pretty apt um, and appropriate title. I think a lot about the, the context of my work, both uh, where it's physically created in, whether it's uh, in my home studio in Wasaic, New York, which is a pretty rural environment. Um, I already mentioned about queering the landscape, which is kind of a new concept for me. Um, but also while, when I'm away at residence, what that physical, physical location um, and that new place, what that does to the work and how does that open up space and possibly new territories and new possibilities of opening up space. Um, and that also thinks about the context of my work in terms of larger conversations of engaging in the art world. Um, I'm really fortunate to be included in exhibitions um, here and there, especially this one, to um, engage in those conversations and in those dialogues that um, although I'm creating work for myself and work that I want to make and I feel really excited about, uh, I also really recognize the fact that I'm not making work exclusively for myself or for my eyes only, that I want the work to go out into the world, to have conversations, to have lives beyond my studio and beyond my hand, my approach. Um, and I think the visual vocab vocabulary that I create and that I facilitate, especially through the realm of abstraction, um, is a great tool to kind of open up those spaces. And I think abstraction um, in general can be a pretty open and flexible and democratic process. Um, because if people are um, turned off or intimidated um, in any way, there's a still at least formal considerations, color, mind, form, and shape that hopefully someone can respond to um, and think about and then think about how they're navigating throughout space. Uh, I also think about a lot my role um, as an arts administrator, both in a curatorial sense, as well as my role as um, at the Wasake Project. Um, I was also one of the co-directors of an artist-run space in Brooklyn, um, or taking guest set projects for four and a half years. So I think a lot about creating opportunity um, and for other artists, um, especially emerging artists um, and those in marginalized communities, and how important it is to, for me, to be in a community of artists, um, and how it's not just a singular activity, how everything that I do and the work that I make and that I create has a higher purpose, hopefully, and engages in larger conversations. Um, so I think my visual work um, and my curatorial work, as well as my um, arts administrative work, kind of all feed into one practice where it's fostering, ideally, 
fostering community um, and opening up space for other voices and other people um, to enter into the conversation. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to learn more about Arcade Project Curatorials program, you can find us on arcadeprojectzine.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and on Artsy.